who's winning the offseason right now? Who is a winner when it comes to the offseason at this point in time? Because offseason has kind of become a negative term. When we talk about college football, it's kind of become this thing where you, you flinch a little bit here in it, and people like to say no offseason, which hey, I agree with. College football does not take a, a break by any stretch of the imagination. But even so, I think it's fair to define this time of the year as an offseason. But who's winning right now? Because we understand now those 12 Saturdays, that's what defines your college football season. That's what defines your team and your overall product, your output. But a lot of the input is going on right now behind closed doors. I'll tell you what, national championship trophies are being won during those 15 spring practices. It was won during winter conditioning. Like It's, it's a beautiful thing, the way that college football is kind of a, a year-round life cycle. So with that being said, talking about some winners in the offseason, it's very difficult for me to sit here right now and tell you Ohio State is not the offseason winner. The offseason national champion, I think, is what Jesse Simonton has an article on over on L3.com. Again, shout out to Jesse Simonton, just producing absolute bangers week in and week out. Ohio State, here's kind of the laundry list of what they've done over the course of, oh, the last six months or so. A couple days ago, they land running back coach Carlos Lachlan from Oregon. I think anytime you bring a running back coach within the conference over to your school, also a high-profile school like Oregon, I think that matters. That's a win. Number one recruiting class currently, as we sit here live on the air, in the class of 2025. All right, Ryan Day, I know it's early. Ryan Day's not playing with y'all, man. Right? Ryan Day's not messing around here. They're acquiring talent. Five-star quarterback in Julian Sayan from Alabama. A little short-term signee action. Bring him over to Columbus. Quarterback room is packed. Hey, what's one more dude in there? What's, what's one more guy added to the room there going on with Devin Brown, Lincoln Keenholz, Aaron Nolan, and oh, by the way, Will Howard, who you also landed through the portal. So not one, but two high-profile quarterbacks through the portal. Also, speaking of the portal, you got the number one player in the whole darn thing in Caleb Downs from Alabama, All-American freshman. I mean, his if his tape is his resume, he's getting any job he wants in the country is Caleb Downs from what he did last year at Alabama. And then you bring over the Big Ten head coach, Chip Kelly, yes, Big Ten head coach Chip Kelly at UCLA, you bring him over not to be a head coach, you bring him over to be your offensive coordinator. Talk about a win. That's a massive win for Ohio State. And no, a ch you know, cherry on top is you have the number one recruit in the entire country. You kept him committed, got pen to paper in the class of 2024 with Jeremiah Smith. This is a team that went 11 and 1 last year. 11 and 1. So they just did all those things, and you're telling me that's not enough to get one more win. Now, that one more win has been a little bit elusive in terms of, you know, beating Michigan, so we understand that. But Ohio State, we'll see what happens on the field, but I don't know that you can have a better offseason than what they've put together right now. Oregon, also a massive, massive winner to this point in the offseason. They've secured not one, but two top five quarterbacks through the portal. Dante Moore, a little security for the future. Dylan Gabriel, six year, no problem. Let's get it done out here in Eugene. Also, they secured the number four player in the portal, someone for Dylan Gabriel to throw the football to, and Evan Stewart, and they kept their head coach from taking the Alabama job. This has really flown under the radar because of all the noise around other guys that didn't take the job as well and around Kalen DeBoer taking the Bama job. But, like, when Dan Lanning released that promo video of him saying, I'm staying right here in Oregon, saying, you know, hey, if, if you are worried about your head coach leaving, come play for us. You know how much of just a headline that was for everyone in the college football landscape that Oregon's going to be a factor, not just this upcoming year, but as long as Dan Lanning's there? Because if Dan Lanning's not leaving for the Alabama job, what job is he leaving for? You know what I'm saying? So that was a massive win, Oregon. I think it's very difficult for me to say they weren't a winner to this point in the year, in the offseason. Now, the pushback we'll get on this is, well, they just lost their running back coach to Ohio State. That's a big win for Ohio State. It's a loss for Oregon, no way around it. But I will say this, I think Oregon is a high-profile enough school. I think that job is going to be coveted by a lot of big names, and I expect Oregon to, in the long run, be just fine. Miami, I think they're a winner without question. I mean, you look at what they did and the work they put in, as Josh Newberg would say, recruiting through the whistle to take Cam Ward from declaring for the NFL to bringing him back to school. Look at him here, just sitting back playing darts out here in spring practice. If you're listening on podcast, we're throwing a little bit of B-roll of Cam Ward, just throwing some routes on air, but a little bit of routes on air, enough to get the folks in Coral Gables excited, and I don't blame them. Cam Ward changes the entire complexion of how you view Miami in 2024. Think about how differently you would think about Miami if you had Tyler Van Dyke coming back or Emory Williams coming back to be your starter next year. Emory Williams obviously coming back, but you hear what I'm saying. 
you would say, okay, I, I see potential. I see, you know, a way for us to be successful with them. Maybe we can win eight games, nine games. With Cam Ward, you're talking about winning the ACC. And that's not to dunk on anybody else that's in that quarterback room or was in that quarterback room. But we understand now Cam Ward is just a different caliber of player. So for Miami, I think they're a winner in the sense that they even landed Cam Ward. I think that to me enough is uh, enough to make him a winner. Last school to talk about here, Ole Miss. In terms of what they kept, Trey Harris. More or less a 1,000-yard receiver a year ago in the SEC. Had 985 yards. You kept your quarterback, Jackson Darty. I know his name is Jackson Dart. We call him Jackson Darty on this show because it's a party in Ole Miss during the day when they're playing. They re-upped with Lane Kiffin. I've said it many times. The fact that you kept Lane Kiffin in Oxford, I think it's best for everyone involved. Lane Kiffin isn't for everybody, but he is for Ole Miss. Ole Miss champions Lane Kiffin the way that he does things. Lane Kiffin also doing Lane Kiffin things landed a top three portal class, which includes the likes of Juice Wells, who is going to be, I mean, it's going to be Batman and Superman out there with Trey Harris and Juice Wells on the field together at the same time. And then also, they went and landed some big boys on the defensive line, like big-time playmakers that you've been missing in Oxford for a little bit now. Walter Nolan, Prince Lee, Uman Mielin. It's a dangerous recipe up front. To have that up front, and then an offense that you feel pretty confident is going to score north of 30, 35 points a game, Ole Miss is very, very real when it comes to their aspirations to win the SEC. Like, there's a reason now there's some extra buzz in Oxford. There's a reason there's a little bit of extra hype right now. It's because everyone sees what they're doing and what they have on paper right now and the way they've built this roster via the portal and what they have. It's exciting. It looks like it's going to do some really good things. So the the pushback there is, hey, well, they lost Quinshawn Judkins. I just have a feeling that they're going to be okay without Quinshawn Judkins. That's not me taking anything away from Quinshawn Judkins or speaking ill of the kind of player he is. He's going to do great things at Ohio State, but I think Ole Miss offensively will just be schematically advanced and they'll be good enough to score at the clip they want to score at with all the weapons they have so a lot of winners so far this offseason might be something to revisit after the spring but regardless college football year-round sport those are the teams that are winning right now hey y'all thanks so much for watching subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of the hard count also be sure to check out other videos on the on three youtube channel